Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, web storage. So with web storage you can store data in your browser, you don't have to use a database, and you can access that data on other pages, and the data will still be there when you close your browser or you close the tab and then you reopen it. Uh, so first I'll explain, here I have a really basic HTML file, uh, here I included a scripts file, a scripts.js file where our code will go, I've included a jQuery and a CSS file. The CSS file doesn't have anything within it except the CSS reset, which we covered in a previous tutorial. And then I have the scripts.js file, which uh, is a J it's uh, using the jQuery ready function, and our code will go here. Uh, okay, so first I'll cover, so with JavaScript you get these two storage objects built into the browser. One is session storage and the other is local storage. So the difference is session storage, when you close the browser or you navigate to another tab, the data you created won't be there. So for example, if you're on yourwebsite.com slash index and you create some data and store it in the browser using session storage, if you navigate to yourwebsite.com slash about, then that data won't be there. You won't be able to access it. With local storage, on the other hand, you will be able to access it everywhere and it'll still exist when you close the browser and reopen it. So first, let's go over session storage. So they're really easy to start um, using. It's really easy to start using these functions. So session storage can be useful when a user is writing in an input field on your website, for example. And then if they close their browser or if they reload it, or not if they close their browser, sorry, if they reload that tab in the browser or if they close it by accident and then reopen that exact same tab, the data they were writing can appear back in. So a good example of this is when you're filling out a login information or sign up information on a website and when you reload or if you have an error in your form, when the page refreshes, the data you entered is still there. So I'll give a really simple example with that right now. So we'll create a simple form and we'll have input type text ID uh, uh, field one placeholder name. Oops. So we create an input field for your name and an input field for your email. So now if we reload this page, we have name and email. So we're not going to apply any like styles to this, we're just trying to show the functionality of the JavaScript code. So if you enter something in, name and email, and then when you refresh, the information's gone. So what we can do now is, in this scripts file, we'll use session storage. So when the user enters anything in either of these fields, we want to store that value in session storage, and then when the page is refreshed, if a value exists for some key, then load it. So the way session storage works is we have a key and a value. So this is what we'll do. Uh, if id field one on change, we'll call function. So field one, when it changes, we're going to call a function. And what we're going to do is check if the key for this storage exists. If not, uh, um, create one, if so, update it. So it looks like, so storage looks similar to a normal JavaScript object. So you can have an object and you have a um, key and then a value. So this is how storage works, session storage and local storage. You provide a key and then you can look it up, look up its value. Uh, if it doesn't exist, you can create a key with a value, etc. So here what we'll do is if not so the way you use session storage and local storage, because they're built into the browser, they're available under the window uh, object. So you can just do if not session storage. That's how it looks. If not session storage. And because um, it's treated as a normal JavaScript object, you can just do the dot operator or the bracket operator with the key. So if session storage field one, if it doesn't exist, then we do session storage set item and then the key and the value. So field one and we set the value to field one dot val. So here if it doesn't exist, so actually what we can do is 
it will always it will constantly update based on the user um, based on what the user is entering. So we don't actually need to check if it doesn't exist. We can just set the item field one to field one dot val. And so what will happen is when you enter in a letter, field one will be set to that letter. Then when you enter in a second letter, you're overwriting what's in field one. You're just setting it again. You don't have to call like an update function or anything like that. And then we'll do the same thing for field two and we'll set like this. Okay. And so now to test this, what we'll do is we can actually console log session storage field one comma field two. Okay, and so this function will be called when the page is loaded only once. So we can reload this now and check the console and we should have undefined undefined because the values weren't set yet. So in name we'll put in DAN and now we reload. Oh, whoops, it was not on key press key up. Oh, there it is. So um, we're going to use a key up function here, actually. So when the key is let go, so for example, we typed in Dan, the function was ran every single time, and now you can see that Dan is being printed here. We can write Daniel, and when we reload, we have Daniel. We enter some random letters here, we reload, and we have Daniel in these letters. So what we want to do is, if session storage item field 1 or field 2 exists, place it into here. So what we'll do is, so when the page is reloaded, if session storage field one, so if it exists, then we're getting get the element in the DOM, field one, and we're gonna set the value to session storage get item field one and so here you can see session storage dot field one you can also do if session storage get item field one you can do both of these session storage get item field one if it exists update it and we'll do the same thing for field two so now if we reload you can see that the values are here and now We'll enter in something like, we'll enter in some random letters, we'll empty it here and we reload it, you can see that it's, it persists. So this is what's great about session storage, that the value persists, but if we open up a new tab, so if we create um, a new file and we try and print session storage field 1 or field 2, it'll be undefined. It doesn't exist in another tab or on another page. And if we close the browser, so we take this, open it up, so this so you can see when I opened a new tab, so this tab we're able to reload, but if we took the, um, the URL and opened it in a new tab, it simulates the browser closing and opening the, 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 the file. So here you can see it's undefined. So session storage persists only in that tab and as long as the browser doesn't close. Sometimes though you may want to store data, for, so session storage will basically expire when the browser closes or that tab closes and never opens again. Um, local storage, on the other hand, will persist forever. It won't expire ever, and you're able to access it um, from any page. It doesn't exist only for that page or that tab. And to use local storage, you can just change session storage to local storage. So wherever it says session storage, we can just write local storage, and then we can print it out. So here, if we reload this, we have undefined, undefined. So now we can do Daniel. Reload, and we have Daniel on the find, uh, email d at d.com, reload, and here it is. Enter in some letters, and it's still staying. Now if we take this URL and open a new tab, we still get these same values. So that's basically the difference between session storage and local storage. So session storage is great if you only want to store some data for that page, and you want it to expire when that page is closed. Local storage persists forever, and it's accessible on any page.